Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease, and I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute as medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hey friends, we are actually going to talk about two essential oils today that can assist us from a hormonal support perspective. (sighs) We could all use that. And today I am going to talk about different ways of using clary sage as well as geranium. So one of the things that can be really, really stressful, especially for those of us that are having our monthly cycles, is the cramps, the discomfort, the hormonal surges, the ups and downs, all of the above. Pretty sure I don't have to describe anything else, not to mention the nausea and or vomiting, but you get the point. So I wanted to talk about these two essential oils with you guys today Again, because I want you to have an arsenal of things that can support you from both an emotional perspective and potentially what you can use throughout this particular time of your life, including if you are outside of menstruation, for example, menopause. Hello, hot flashes. So the first essential oil that we're going to talk about is clary sage, salvia scleria. It is also of the Lamessii family, and that is an herb. And it kind of grows up to three feet high, and it's a very kind of vivacious plant, so to speak. And I love seeing clary sage because it it instantly kind of lifts my mood. I don't even have to smell it, but it is very fragrant. And it has like pink like flower spikes almost. And the part of the plant that we actually use from an essential oil perspective are the tops or the flowers. And usually this essential oil is steam distilled and it can basically come from the flowering tops when they're dry. So they can basically crush those down. And the plant itself, like the actual herb has essential oils in it as well it's native to central europe or western asia and many many cultures have used it throughout time and what's really cool is that it it just it's just one of those essential oils that helps me to just take a deep breath and when you're looking to purchase this particular essential oil again it's going to be either on the colorless side or it may have a yellow tint to it and lavender is also in this family as well so don't be surprised if it has that lavender ish smell to it and some of the therapeutic properties of this particular essential oil include uh, analgesic properties antiseptic antidepressant their nervine and also it just kind of calms you down and in many instances When you are working with this particular essential oil, not only can it it help from an upset stomach perspective, it can also help with oily hair. That's also a good use case for it. But it also helps me when I'm struggling with insomnia. And I love to blend it with either neroli, which is on the expensive side, that's definitely a treat, but I can blend it with sam- sandalwood or lemon or lavender, and it really just gets me to calm down. I can also blend it with geranium as well. And what is so cool about this essential oil is that it can also help to kind of regulate things over time. Now, again, talk to your doctor about it, read up about it, 
because this may work for one person, but it may not work for another. And if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, do not use this essential oil. Just just don't do it. Otherwise, it's generally regarded as safe. And we always err on the side of caution whenever we speak to using an essential oil when a woman is pregnant or breastfeeding because so many things can go wrong and we'd rather just be better safe than sorry. And it's really one of those things that I always make sure that I ask clients of, are you pregnant, planning to get pregnant? Or do you think you might be? Because I never want to create a blend and cause harm that is against my code of ethics and I would never do that. So I definitely will take just a drop. You don't need much at all. But I will take that essential oil and put it, usually I'll use even as something as simple as an olive oil and I will rub that over my abdominal area, pretty much right above the pubic line and just rub my stomach in circular motions or you can use it with a hot compress. And again, make sure you're using a dispersant, but you can get your water really hot add your essential oil right before, add the towel to it and really wring it out really well. And just kind of lay with that warm compress over your abdomen or even on your lower back. And it's, it's just wonderful. I cannot tell you how much I love to use Clary Sage when it is that time of the month. Because while I don't experience a lot of issues with cramps, just that heaviness and the discomfort and the nausea has definitely been real for me lately. So I always make sure that I start diffusing Clary Sage a few days before the start of my cycle along with lemon. And it always tends to just calm my stomach down when it's a little upset. And it also brightens my mood because you're tired. So it's really important just to make sure that you're taking care of yourself in that way. And then, as I mentioned, just like I did in the last episode, Clary Sage blends well with geranium. And that is the essential oil that I'm going to talk about next. Now, geranium is one of my favorite oils. I have a lot of favorites, I'll say, but I really enjoy how this particular essential oil not only helps to boost my mood, but again, because of those analgesic properties and the just antidepressant, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, circulatory, all of those properties within this particular essential oil just really and truly help with hormonal changes and cramps, especially. And I really and truly make sure that I keep geranium at all times because sometimes the depression or sadness that I experience or the fatigue is so great that it's really hard for me to get out of bed in the morning. And that is why I'm just so grateful to have essential oils from that perspective and why it's so important to pay attention to your body and learn what works and doesn't work because I now know what are some of those things that I can use that will really and truly help me. And it definitely, definitely does that. And when it comes to geranium, it comes from the plant family of Geraniaceae. And for this particular botanical name, it is Pelagonium graviolens. And there is also a Bulgarian version of geranium as well. So you just want to keep that in mind. So 
The biggest thing when you're looking at geranium oil is this particular oil is going to come from the leaves or the stalks, which is why you may see either a pale yellow or a slightly pale green color from the bottle. And the reason why I'm telling you what to look for, because remember, essential oils aren't regulated. And I always encourage you to make sure that you're going to really good sites, Pronarome, Simplers Botanicals, plant therapy, New Directions Aromatics, Eden Botanicals, those companies, Zayat, um, those are very reputable and good companies that I have used. And I really know what I'm getting when I am ordering from these particular companies. So you will be able to very easily come back to even the show notes for this episode and be able to see like, wait a minute, what color does she say I should look out for? And again, you want to make sure that when you do a test and you can simply take out a white sheet of paper and drop, put a drop of that essential oil on it, it should evaporate quickly and it should not leave that greasy looking stain. Like let's say if you drop, put a drop of oil next to the essential oil and then put a drop of the oil itself so that you can develop that frame of reference for what an essential oil that has been blended with an actual carrier oil looks like and feel it with your finger so that you can tell the difference and actually smell it. And sometimes what I do, again, is I order from different companies and I have been able to train my nose to know what it smells like. So if I do encounter a synthetic version of this oil, I know it's fake. I get a headache or my nose may get irritated. It's very clear to me when an essential oil has been adulterated. So those are things to look out for. And when there aren't really many any uh, contraindications or issues to look out for when it comes to geranium. And I love blending this particular oil with many, many oils such as basil, bergamot, black pepper, cardamom, uh, German and Roman chamomile, cypress, grapefruit, hyssop, uh, jasmine, lavender, peppermint, patchouli. You can get so creative when blending these essential oils together. And I really personally enjoy blending them together During my cycle, I will diffuse them when I'm about to go to bed and I will put just two drops of geranium, four drops of lavender, and sometimes, sometimes when I'm feeling really, really fancy, I'll either put some mandarin or sandalwood in the diffuser as well and it's just... Uh, it, it makes for a really good night and a very deep sleep. So I just wanted to give you those two essential oils for now. So with that, take care, friends. Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, reflect on your triumphs, know that you are doing your best, and do what you need to do in order to be well. I would absolutely love it if you subscribe to this podcast and share this episode with a friend. And don't forget, leave me a review. I read those and try very hard to improve the show based upon your feedback. So I'd love to hear from you. And with that, be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care.